Well, good morning, my little chocolate cupcakes, and welcome to another day on planet Earth. I am very conscious of the fact that people are not going to be celebrating birthdays. Adults and kids, kids alike are not going to be getting their birthday cakes. So, I thought that today I would show you how to make something really tasty that is reasonably cheap, that you can knock up in minutes. Um, so this morning I'm going to be doing an adult birthday cake, and this afternoon I'll have a go at a kid's cake. So, um, I thought I would do something with biscuits because we have got lots of biscuits. We have biscuits coming out of our ears normally in this house. Um, and this proves the point. When the grandkids come round on a Sunday, I tend to have biscuits available for them. I didn't realise though how many I have and how many of a particular type I have. I have not one, not two, not three, but four packets of rich tea biscuits. Why in God's name? I don't know, because we don't like rich tea biscuits. I don't know why I've bought them, but I will use them because they're delicious in this. So, first of all, we are going to be measuring some margarine or some butter. I'm gonna use butter because I've got butter hanging around that is starting to turn and I need to use it up. So, into my saucepan, I am going to be putting 85 grams, ooh, noise, 85 grams of butter plop into my saucepan. If you've got digital scales, they're fantastic. You've got a zero or a tar button, T-A-R-E. If you press zero, it will take away that weight and then you can add something else into it. So the next ingredient I'm going to add in, and I've got my recipe on a paper plate here, so you can see, look. That. Um, I am going to add in 170 grams of golden syrup. Now, because I don't have to measure this into a separate bowl, I can just pour this straight in. Oh, happy days. So I want 170 grams of golden syrup. Um, have you seen the Vicar of Dibley where she puts her head under the chocolate fountain? I could do that with golden syrup. Golden syrup is my go-to. Um, I'm in a happy place treat. So I've got 170 grams of golden syrup. And I'm also going to use 400 grams of chocolate. Officially, you're supposed to use plain chocolate. Now, I haven't got 100, I haven't, I haven't got 400 grams of plain chocolate. So what I've done is I've gone through the grandkids' sweetie drawer. I'm sorry, Jacob and Emily, but Mummy Nanny needed it more than you did. And I will replace it. So I'm going to break up 400 grams of chocolate. Because I've got a mixture of milk and plain chocolate here, I need it a bit more chocolatey, so I am going to add in a tablespoon or two of um, cocoa powder. If you've got all plain chocolate, you don't need to, but I have got two bars of milk chocolate um, that I've managed to scavenge from my baking cooking drawer. Uh, and if I'm not making chicken mole with it, then I'm making something just disgustingly good. So that all gets broken up into the saucepan. Duh, duh, duh. Sorry about this, I should have prepared this earlier. I have prepared the biscuits, which is why there was only three packets on show earlier and not four. The other packet has been smashed up, other than a few, just for effect. You know, like on Blue Peter when they say, here's one I prepared earlier. Mm. Crikey, I need some straight from there. Uh, so this is the only packet of plain chocolate that I managed to find. But it's all going to be good and it's all going to go in. So as soon as that's done, I'm going to put the heat on the stove and I am going to melt this. It's all you need to do. It's a real quick, no bake, chuck it in the fridge and then we'll decorate it up afterwards. Now, uh, the thing that this has in it that Princess Diana probably needed when she was a bit browned off with Charles uh, is alcohol. You can either choose to put alcohol in it or you don't choose to put alcohol in it. The choice is yours. I have um, gone through my cupboards yet again and I have found some Spanish coffee liqueur. I think it's Spanish. It could be from anywhere, really. Um, it's probably about 500 years old. I'm going to smell it <laughs> before I put it in because I have no idea whether this is fit or not. But you know what? It's alcohol. Um, I've also found some uh, orange liqueur, which I've no idea why again, because I don't drink orange liqueur. Maybe I bought it for a cocktail at Christmas. I have no idea. Um, and what I also found um, was uh, an emergency supply of spiced rum. 
which as you can see by the bottle has been utilised, but it's probably taken five years. So we don't have an alcohol problem in this house. Well, actually husband does, but I don't. Um, so I'm going to use some of those. It's up to you what you want to do. If you want to make it completely kid friendly, it really doesn't matter. Just leave it out. Put a bit of orange juice in, whatever. So I am going to melt the butter, the chocolate and the golden syrup over a heat. Hopefully that will start heating up for me very quickly. I have got a six inch tin. If you've got a seven inch or an eight inch tin, it really doesn't matter. I put some paper in it, paper in the bottom and I've lined it around the sides. And then I have also got some fruit. You are gonna need 140 grams of fruit. Now, Princess Diana probably would have been very healthy and had sultanas or raisins or currants or whatever. But I haven't got any of that stuff. So I've gone through my cupboards again. And I have found Fab Fruit, fruit, fab fruit Surprise, reduced down to 64p, which I'm going to be using. I have found some dark chocolate cranberries, which I bought at Christmas we never actually ate. There is another story in that. We're not going to go into that one today. Um, I found some white chocolate drops. Now, chocolate does actually come from a cocoa bean. A bean is officially a vegetable, so they do class as one of your five a day being healthy um and i've also got some fudge chunks now yeah okay they don't qualify for anything but i like them and i found them and i'm going to utilize them um i've also found some walnuts which i had knocking around and some flaked almonds you don't have to use well you can use anything it really doesn't matter it's a birthday cake so whatever you've got in your cupboards if you've got a tube of smarties use them who cares so I am still stirring, I'm still melting, and in my bowl is nothing, because as I said before, I did prepare my biscuits earlier. I have got 400 grams, no it's not, it's 300 grams, I lie. Uh, I've got 300 grams of crushed up, smushed up uh, rich tea biscuits, which I used a rolling pin to bash and break it up, and I didn't want to do it now because it takes forever. I've got a few left in the bottom of the packet, which I'm just going to break up just to show you that I've actually done it. So just break them into uh, crusty, smashy bits about the size of a postage stamp. And then as soon as my chocolate and butter or margarine, it really doesn't matter, uh, is all melted, then I will be chucking everything else in. I'm going to be doing mine over the top of my scale so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. But if you haven't got it, it doesn't matter. It really, really doesn't matter. I need 140 grams of fruit, as I said. In this is 100 grams. So this is 100 grams, but I'm not going to use all of that. I'm going to put some funky stuff in there. I'm going to put a real concoction. Make it your own. My friend down in Croydon, the lovely Tracy, who's my lovely friend, hello Tracy, um, once made a Christmas cake many, 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 many years ago and she didn't have quite a few of the ingredients, so she substituted, which is fine, but it was supposed to be things like, uh, I think it was supposed to have had almonds in it, she didn't have any, so she put cornflakes in and it was supposed to have cherries in it, uh, these cherries, cherry cherries, but she didn't have any, so she put strawberries <laughs> jamming <laughs> it was delicious though who cares we all ate it it was very tasty but we do we, every now and then we do remind her about her strawberry jam and cornflake fruitcake I won't mention your last name Tracy <laughs> right my chocolate is almost melted I am going to add in some of this alky full before we do anything else because I want it to soak in I'm going to use this little jar this little bottle if I can even get it open oh it's got a little lid it's probably manky better taste it to make sure it's okay oh yeah I reckon about two tablespoons I don't think that's quite enough this is going to be a birthday cake we need to celebrate we might have a virus all floating around the air but it's no excuse not to have a party even if it's only just the immediate family a little bit more alcohol you're looking for probably i don't know two to three tablespoons 
as much or as little as you want, but don't get bladdered because you'll be sort of falling out on the street. My chocolate has just about, you see that, all melted. And the bird is out again. It might pop back in and say hello to me. So if you hear a squawk, it's likely that she's flown back in again. Because hubby is on conference calls once more. So if you hear squawking and a sudden landing of a bird on my shoulder, you know why. I'm trying to be professional. Look, I've even got an apron on today. Am I good or what? So, into my mixture. I need to eat more spinach. Some fruit. Bit of this. Bit of that, a few of the fudgy chunks just because I can. Can you see I'm not weighing any of this? Whoop, some chocolate raisins and some white chocolate chips, which means then that this mixture, all the rest of my ingredients, I can make something else another day. I might even use them this afternoon in the kids' birthday cake. But for the time being, I have got a lovely, gloopy, chocolatey gorgeousness. And it's going to go into my saucepan. And I'm going to stir it all around. Get every bit out. Don't be putting your face underneath it like this. Although I will probably have to taste it just to make sure that it is it's fit for human consumption. So, in there, give it a stir. Mix it all up. I have got a recipe that if you haven't got chocolate, you can use cocoa powder. Oh, I've not put the cocoa in. Ah, stupid oh mio. That's Italian. About a tablespoon, a bit more chocolate. And give it another mix. And as soon as that is mixed, it's that quick. I feel like it needs more fruit. What else am I going to put in? More raisins. There. Um, yeah, that would do. And now it looks like that. Does that look delicious or what? Stick it in your tin. It is quite rich. You don't need a huge amount of this, which is why I'm only putting it into a six inch tin. You can make it into an eight inch tin and then it's shallower slices, but I might even this afternoon, or it, maybe I'll do it a second video, I don't know. Um, I might put something on the top of it and make it really, really, really naughty. You don't need sponge cake all the time for birthdays. This with a candle in and another glass of alcohol uh, will go down an absolute treat. So it's come. Ooh, it's a big deep cake. In October, my stepdaughter, Charlotte, hi Charlotte, is getting married. And this is one of her layers of her cake because she's not having a traditional cake. The girl has class and style. And if it's good enough for Princess Diana, it's pretty good enough for her. So, that's in the tin. I'm going to pop it in the fridge for about an hour. And then I will get it out. There. Delicious. It probably would have been better in an 8-inch tin, but I haven't got a deep one. Done! La-la! Into the fridge, and I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye!